There we go. There's our numbers. Hey, everybody. Uh, today is uh, day 254. It is uh, January 21st. It is the uh, day after the inauguration of President Trump. So future generations uh, may mark this as a grand occasion or not grand occasion, depending on your perspective. But hopefully uh, things are good near you. Um, today uh, was my um, seventh laser session and I made a video kind of in the car and, and then I realized when I saw it that the video would be turned so I thought I would just kind of remake kind of what I said uh, here at home um, much later unfortunately but so it's not as live as it would have been uh, but the uh, the seventh laser session definitely was not as painful as any of the previous sessions uh, I did find out that usually from session to session they do up the voltage they do or they up the power whatever they do they up the laser more light in the laser uh, and so you're progressively gonna get you know if you compared like today from six visits ago it would be a considerable increase but it's just slow over time and so she started at a certain level and she got some stuff done and then she's you know I'm gonna do your your lip and she got about three times and I just I couldn't take it and so she said well you want me to turn it down I said yeah and so she did for that and I'm hoping she turned it back up for the others because I could not feel like anything but boy but oh right in here Oh, woo crazy. Um, but it was really, today was a different experience. Uh, it was the uh, first time I had been uh, since going full time. So I got there and not that I was treated any, mistreated before, but I, I felt like I was treated a little differently uh, this time. It was Mrs. and Ma'am and, uh, oh, would you like a cup of coffee? You know, oh dear, how are you? Um, and, um, it was interesting. It was interesting. And, it, and it's been, you know, it's 10 weeks between visits. So, I mean, stuff happens. Uh, got to use the women's room. Uh, it was really kind of cool. It was really kind of cool. I was very happy, uh, when I left. So, pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> what makes me do a video today, a couple things. Uh, uh, one of the uh, Trans Women National, the president of Trans Women National, actually, uh, did her own kind of journey today. Um, very challenging, uh, dealing with some issues, and I'll let that be that. I don't want to say more than she wants, if she, I'm respecting her privacy. But um, I had uh, a an experience today that kind of made me wince myself a little. Um, you know, and to set the stage, I guess I would have to say that, you know, my parents don't live anywhere near me. Uh, I'm 44 years old. My parents are both, both sets of my parents are retired. Uh, both live on opposite sides of the country. I'm in the middle. Um, we don't really see each other much. They're doing their thing. They're retired. I'm doing my thing. I'm not retired. But, you know, to talk to a parent and, you know, based on their like choice of language and, and what they say, uh, you know, they're not into your transition. <laughs> You know, if they lived in town and I lived near them and they saw me every day, um, they probably would not have used my old name or as the kids as the kids today say, your dead name. Um, you know what I mean? But it's like I don't want to say they're living in denial of it, but it's it almost is like denial of it. You know, like hello, and they talk to you and on the phone and. It's like, you know, I feel like I'm that awkward 17-year-old kid or 18-year-old kid that left to college still. 
and you know that's their picture of me you know and you know neither of them are on facebook so they don't really see pictures of me they don't really um i have sent them pictures occasionally um and i've mentioned things like getting my driver's license updated or <clears throat> i've talked a little bit about laser and everything else and you know I, I guess it just takes time maybe to permeate but both sets of parents they did it to me they call me by my my dead name and my old name and it was like you know i wanted to say what what can i do you know what you can't do anything you just have to move on and uh to be totally fair uh, I can't think of anyone else in this world who really, I think, has the right to call me whatever the heck they want to call me. I mean, they are my parent. I would not be here without them. I got half of my gametes from one parent, half of my gametes from the other parent. Uh, you know, you can't, you know, I don't expect them to adhere to what I want. Would I, I would prefer them to yes but i i can't expect them and i'm not going to treat them any differently uh not going to treat them ill or wish them ill uh they're going to do what they're going to do and i'm going to do what i'm going to do so but it, I, it was it was it struck me as odd like it happened to both both parents when i called them on the phone today were yeah uh last night i volunteered at the uh, louisville youth group and it was very, very interesting. I felt very welcomed. Um, it was very, very cool. And, you know, uh, the first night you get asked a lot of questions. And it kind of brought up some old issues. And, um, you know, I, uh, I prefaced my in, uh, introduction with, because, you know, they wanted to know, I'm trying to remember what the question was. But it was like, why are you here? Why are you volunteering? I think was it. You know what what makes you want to volunteer? And I, I had to explain that, you know, when I was their age, you know, their age being 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, and up to like 20, 21, um, there was no internet. You know, we didn't have phones like we do today. We don't have connections like we do today. We don't have network and groups like we do today. And so I felt very, very isolated growing up and in the dark, and I obviously felt something was wrong with me and did uh, a typical transgender story. Um, but I wanted to sh paint that picture with them to say that, you know, my incentive for or my desire to help out or to give back to the community um, is because I do not want any other child to feel the way that I felt. Um, I think our world is is changed enough that they're not going to feel that way. But um, there are pockets of ignorance everywhere. So you know, but um, it brought up brought back some some dark thoughts, um, which I'm still kind of dealing with today. And then you know, again, to get called your dead name, you're like. But life does move on, and um, I had, like I said the, this morning, done the laser, and I walked out, and I could see a couple of the little dead hairs, and I was like, you know, more of my face is clearer than not. You know, I'm definitely over some hump here, and um, you know, the next um, <clears throat> the next phase probably will be living my one year RLE or I want to get you need know, 12 months right <clears throat> and I've already got one month down so I want to put like balloons or something on the back wall and number them <clears throat> and then every every month I get to pop a balloon <laughs> and when they're all gone then I can apply for RLE uh, surgery because it seems like the the practice is that sir, uh, your one year is the starting line. It's just the starting line for starting stuff. So, uh, 
where was I going with that? So I, I think this the next part, this next phase of my journey is really just going day to day and allowing the changes to occur, the um, hormonal changes and everything else. Because obviously things are changing. I'm changing on a day to day basis. Uh, you know, you look back weeks and two weeks can go by and you look a little different, a little different or -er -er -er. You know, a month you look very different or -er 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 -er. Um, you know, so things are still happening. Body is still changing. Um, a little bit of good news. Um, I actually have like a cup breast today. I, I noticed when I looked in the mirror. Um, I actually have like a breast. That's pretty damn good to have like a dome breast. Um, so when I get old, it, it'll sag. <laughs> I'll take that I'll take that but I thought that was kind of cool I hope it continues to grow you know put it under the grow lamp um, and really that's just about it that's all I can think of um, <clears throat> I can't think of too much else on the horizon other than uh, just popping those balloons behind me when I put them up and you know I, I think it's gonna be really quick it's gonna go really quick now that said, um, <clears throat> um, once my tax stuff is done and I need to make sure that I set aside monies for like my daughter and school clothes and everything else, uh, I probably will look into what it will take to do the electrolysis that needs to be done for surgery. Um, because as I alluded to in the other video, um, they were saying six sessions, six weeks apart, 36 weeks nine months and um, I'm looking for an example that I can show if you'll pardon poor Squirtle here um, you know so far in my journey here electrolysis has been up here and instead electrolysis is going to be around here uh, and everyone says that it's uh, magnitude more painful than this. So uh, the joy that we go through. Um, but uh, I have learned a lot about the male anatomy. And I don't mean that necessarily in a sexual way. But uh, Latin terms for things and the area and whatnot, what needs to be done and how much of it has to be done uh, to be cleared um, you know, that's probably going to be the next, next phase. Um, you know, there's no rush. In one hand, there's no rush because no one's going to treat me to take me seriously till I have a year I'm under my belt. Um, at the same time, there are some things that if you have the money and the opportunity you need to be doing because it just takes time. And so, uh, I don't necessarily see a, 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 a stopwatch or a clock a countdown on the wall you know like I have to do this within this amount of time it's just if I can get my ducks in a row it would be good to start and there's a bit of mental uh, mental health here you know if you know that you're doing just something even if it's something small just something to get you towards your goal you're chipping away at your objective you know every day uh, Every week, every month, as opposed to saying, I can't do anything for a year, poor me, you know, instead of doing that, you're breaking up into small chunks. You know, so that's kind of my help. But as I said, I will not do that unless, until uh, I, gotta, again, will make sure that I take care of my responsibilities first. So... And I think that's just about it. Um, I'm really, really happy. I can't, you know, it was the other thing. I woke up today and I just, I felt wonderful. I felt just so wonderful. And my body felt wonderful. It felt good to feel me uh, just laying in bed and being me. It really was cool. So that said, I hope goodwill for everyone. And I'm going to have to move my thing here so I can turn this off. There it goes. So until next time, bye.